And we're back. It's uh, time for our final conversation this morning on The Breakfast uh, with a few days uh, to the most anticipated elections in Nigeria. Violence has, has amplified in many areas. Uh, probably an indication that the exercise may not hold in these uh, crisis areas. Uh, this uh, could also, some would argue, lead to a constitutional crisis if uh, polling fails to hold in a significant percentage of the constituencies. Uh, Nigeria's Independent National Electoral Commission has always said, uh, uh, raised a red flag regarding the security situation and its uh, consequences for the polls. Uh, if the security situation is not monitored and dealt with decisively, it could ultimately uh, culminate in a cancellation and or postponement of elections in sufficient constituencies uh, to hinder the declaration of elections, uh, election results rather, and uh, precipitate a constitutional crisis, according to uh, National Security Advisor Babagana Mongolo, quoting him there. Now, between October and November last year, uh, Nigeria recorded uh, 52 incidents, 52 incidents of inter or intra-party violence across uh, 22 states. On January 15, at the uh, Independent National Electoral Commission's office in Enugu South, local government area suffered an attack which uh, caused the death of a police officer. INEC recorded 50 attacks on its facilities across uh, 15 states between 2019 and uh, 2022. 50 attacks on, 15, on its facilities in 15 states. Now, Emo State recorded 11 at uh, the highest number. Uh, the violence has also hit states like Oshun, Akwaibom, Eboi, Cross River, Abia, Anamra, Taraba, Borno, Ogun, Lagos, Bayelsa, Ondo, and Kaduna states. Now, violent attacks uh, incidents have become higher in the northwest and southeast where banditry, uh, terrorist activities, head of farmer conflicts, and secessionist agitations are exerting huge human and economic impacts. The southeast, uh, where the sit-at-home restriction is still enforced, is highly volatile. However, after initially raising security concerns, INEC has assured that the elections will go ahead as scheduled. How exactly will this situation, like we've outlined here, affect the elections? Uh, we also like to clarify that INEC later came out to, um, to clarify that they didn't make such a statement. It was an official of INEC, head of the training uh, arm of the commission, who made that statement in the speech, but it made clear that he wasn't speaking for the commission. Uh, Justice Huebu is a human rights advocate. He's a lawyer. He joins us uh, for this conversation. Justice, good morning to you, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Good morning. It is my pleasure. All right. Looking at the security situation around the country, latest we've had uh, is an attack on a police station somewhere in Anambra State. Police officers being killed. Do you think that it, we have um, a real possibility of elections in some parts of the country not holding on Saturday? Well, uh, the truth is that um, it's not only in Anambra State. There have been attacks on uh, police personnel, um, <clears throat> police stations and other, not even only police personnel. Even sometimes there have been attacks also on some military officers, uh, roadblocks and uh, checkpoints and other. So it's a very big problem uh, for this uh, coming election. Uh, people, I have to tell you the truth. I believe and I've seen that many Nigerians are still afraid, especially in some areas in the southeast where people like us are uh, going from. People are very, very scared. So I don't truly really know it. In as much as I make as um, restricted and uh, say that they are going on with the election. But the question here now is... Uh, uh, what is the security agents doing about it? What guarantee uh, are they telling Nigerians that uh, there will not be mayhem on that day of election? Because as I speak to you, many Nigerians are still afraid of uh, what has happened in recent times. Hmm. All right. Um, uh, what needs to be done? I mean, if we, uh, I mean, because you're a lawyer, so we want to look at the constitutional constitutional angle of this. Um, if, if we don't have elections holding over the country because of insecurity, um, uh, are we to expect a constitutional uh, 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 what called crisis, you know, a constitutional stalemate, if you want to call it that, as far as the election uh, is concerned and the results being announced are concerned? Yes, yeah, definitely there will be constitutional issues. Uh, and that is why 
uh, most times uh, laws are made just to at times accommodate some uncertainties in the society. I mean, as much as nobody is suspected this or evicted that it's going to be like this, but that is why most constitutions across the country, you see that there, are, there will be one or two lacunas when it comes to issues like, let's be it as it may, uh, for the fact that the constitution has stipulated that the election will hold and the electoral act is also there to support the conduct of the election, and I know who is saddled with the responsibility of fixing dates for elections and all the rest. Uh, will know what to do. But I still believe that uh, uh, no matter what, the, 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 the executive should come together and look at the security apparatus we have and begin to find out what they would do. Because I believe that before now, the security issues should have been sorted out by the executive, by the, all the security operatives and the agents. And we have so many of them. It's not only the police and the military that are the security uh, at which we have in Nigeria. So I felt that before now, uh, the executive should have, uh, you know, tried to uh, sort of uh, have uh, coordinate themselves very well with this security at which to actually know what to do. Because the truth is, this election will, de will, will definitely hold. The worst that can happen is that the election might be shifted for one or two weeks. The election will have to hold. There are no two ways about it. If you remember the last, I think, 2019, there were areas the elections in all holes, and uh, because you remember that some people, as I then, were in the ID camps and all the rest. So, but the government will still have to, or the nation, let me put it this way, will still have to do for a way to conduct elections to avoid unnecessary conflict of the constitution. Hmm. All right. Um, we will look at the infographic that we earlier displayed. Uh, that's Kirsty Daily Trust. They put it up uh, on their site. Um, you, we, it will be seen that the the northeast, uh, the northwest, which is on the flashpoints, and indeed now we're looking at uh, northeast and northwest because uh, if you look at Boko Haram and Banditry, it started from the northeast, and now the insecurity has switched to the northwest the past couple of years. The northwest has 22 million votes or voters, registered voters. Northeast has 12 million registered voters. Northeast has seen some improvement in the security situation. That's what you can see on your screen. Um, and we go to the southeast. We, we have 10.9 million voters in the southeast. Now, today in the papers, uh, the chief of defense staff is saying, we did, can't pay, I could say in Nigerian pigeon. That is, we are good to go. There are no issues. Um, but we have, uh, we're all aware that um, the, the, the security forces in Nigeria have not been able to, to quash you know, and to end the Boko Haram insurgency. Now we have other groups like um, uh, Al Qaeda and the Islamic, uh, you know, in the Maghreb and all that in West Africa, ISWAP rather. Uh, we have Islamic State, West Africa province, and all that. You know, banditry, you know, kidnapping. You have bandits who so are raiding parts of of a country. They kidnap persons, and the the soldiers are not able to release them. Police can't release them. They have to pay their way uh, to freedom. And this is the same military or defense forces are telling us that they are good to go. Um, we go to the southeast where, you know, the security agencies, some of them have deserted some parts of the southeast. They don't even go there for fear of being attacked. If you're going home, you probably don't want to go with a, a police escort because you don't want anyone to attack you. You just try and go home by yourself and pray. Um, a lot, some people from the southeast don't even go home because of fear of, of being kidnapped. When you hear the chief of defense staff saying we are good to go, do you really believe him? Or do you believe his words? Well, for me, <laughs> in as much as he's a military man, but I still see it as a political statement. And you see, it baffles me when we have issues confronting us and we don't want to tell ourselves the truth. And this has been the problem we have in this country, year in, year out. They will come out and tell you there's no problem with the campaign language. Uh, the government in its own will tell you they are on top of the matter in their own language. But at the end of the day, you discover that these things are neither here nor there. On the day of election, I, 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 I have to challenge you and challenge him also that even the chief of defense I will not even lead any, any, any troops to go and monitor the election or to go and man the rules or to go and man any pulling boots. So we should tell ourselves the truth in this country. I expected that... Um, before now, there should have been a synergy between the INEC 
and all the security apparatus in the country in order to know exactly what to do and how to make sure that we'll have a free and fair election. Why I say free and fair election is because if people are afraid and they do not feel perhaps a mass to go and vote, you can't have a free and fair election because a lot of people will be disenfranchised. So at the end of the day, you now ask yourself, in a country of about 200 million people, and at the end of the day, only about 40 million or even less than that will decide who becomes the president. Will you say it is fair? Will you say it is free and fair? The answer is no. So we should tell ourselves the truth. We are, you are talking about registered uh, voters. But you and I know that on the day of election, what we are concerned is about accredited voters. And the accredited voters are the people who came out to actually come and cast their vote. And not the registered voters you are talking about. Many people went and registered just to get their PVC for one reason or the other. I know that they are going to come out on the day of election to vote. Because many people are, many people are afraid. Let's be their nation to ourselves. All over the country. Both in the north, in the west, and in the south. Let's be their nation to, to, to ourselves. Many people are very, very afraid so you, to even so come out. Believe, even of, even of Nari campaigns. So you believe insecurity, uh, fears of insecurity, will affect the turnout? We've been seeing a decline, gradual decline, over the past few elections since 1999, even though the number of registered voters has risen, um, you know, a more than 61.3 percent rise uh, from what we had in 1999. The number of voters has gone down significantly um, till 2019. It's been declining. So you believe that we'll have a, vo a low voter turnout in areas of uh, flashpoints where we have insecurity, like Southeast. Definitely, there's going to be a low turnout. In fact, like if you if you notice from 1999 till now, on the, the issue of uh, turnout, we we'll keep on having what I call uh, uh, um, diminishing return because it is not encouraging. Instead of us to you know going up geometrically, but it's just diminishing on 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 yearly basis, and it is a concern to us. It's a concern to people like us. If you, you will recall that there are news and incidents and evidence that even uh, 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 people are being attacked during campaign, not to talk of during election. And incidents we are even during the voters register, people, uh, some people went to, you know, unleash uh, terror on INEC officials and all the rest. Now, today, the question you now ask yourself, which parents will allow his children to go and work as ad hoc staff? For I neck now. Hmm. Nobody wants to die. Important question. Uh, 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 justice. In the Southeast, we're hearing sit at home, no sit at home. We're hearing there'll be elections in the Southeast. That was what IPOB was saying, but the game changed. Will be emerged and they've kept quiet. But a faction of IPOB is saying no, no way. No, still there will be no elections. Do you think that the Southeasterners will go out to vote? This is a chance they have. The first time since independence, really, really, really elect someone from their part of the country as president. Will they stay at home or will they go out to vote? Well, the truth is, the truth is this. Um, in every situation, the bad and double. I know they will go out to vote, but the truth is that the turnout will not be the turnout will not be that, that encouraging. I have to tell you the truth. Maybe they are listening to ourselves. People are yearning for the positive change. But because of fear of the unknown. Remember, if anybody that dies has died, what are you going to do? All right. Our country Justice, is not in a place I, where you reward things. I wish you had more time. I wish you had more time. But I want to thank you very much for your very candid and honest um, analysis of the what, what lies before us, the real situation that we are facing as uh, Nigerians. Uh, would like to go out to vote. You're saying the security is a real concern. And if nothing changes quickly, quite a number of people will be disenfranchised on Saturday. Justice Webu, human rights advocate, lawyer, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. It's my pleasure. And that's the size of our package right here on The Breakfast. It's been an interesting edition. If you loved it, you enjoyed it, please join us tomorrow, same time, 7 a.m., right here on this channel. Follow us on social media across all platforms, including YouTube at Plus TV Africa. My name is Kofi Bartels. Good morning.